Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. To get, today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and his life. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaimed Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth now in peace. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting, the Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. The response is, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. They pa a pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, my God. They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. At, and at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. He suffered much. I suffered much in, in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw his scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out, out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. And they were going out. They met a Cyrenian named Simon, this man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his gar garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head a written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right, the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and the elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. 
so he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until, until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in the wine and, putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, everybody. It's good to to see you and uh, miss you. So happy to be able to be with you in this way and uh, happy for uh, the helpers that that I have to make this possible. Um, I want to just begin by saying happy birthday to somebody. It was a couple days ago, but one of our our, uh, great parishioners, grandmother and great-grandmother to many, many parishioners, uh, Rita Geibel, celebrated her 90th birthday. This week, Grandma Gumball. So we're very uh, happy for her. I got to talk to her yesterday, and uh, she's such a blessing to us. So we just want to say happy birthday to her. And and also, today is my nephew Kieran's 21st birthday. It's not what he expected, but uh, Kier, have a great day today. Love you, buddy. Today, uh, I wanted to tell you a little story that Kieran's mom actually told me. Uh, my sister Ann. Ann was down at the beach uh, this fall, I think, and she uh, was down at on the, the steps uh, going down from uh, the boardwalk to, to the beach. It's my happy place, the place that I love to be. Um, those steps, I just love the, you know, being able to look down the coast and see the water. And, but she was down there um, making sure uh, the cottage was okay during uh, a potential hurricane. And uh, it had turned out that the hurricane moved offshore a little bit. But she was down there standing on uh, the edge of, of the, she just wanted to see the water. She was on those steps going down to the, to the beach and the water was coming up all the way across the beach. She said it was amazing because above her was blue sky But the horizon, the whole horizon, was pitch black. Pitch black. And it was scary. And she kept looking at it. And it scared her. What was going to happen? What was going to come? And she said, in that place that is such a happy place for so many of us in our family, She really felt God's presence. And in that moment, as she was looking out at the storm, she felt God say to her, hey, look at me. Look at me. I'm here. Look at me. Don't look at that storm on the horizon. You look at me. We're entering Holy Week 
in this Passion Sunday, Palm Sunday is the beginning of Holy Week. It starts with this beautiful entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem, right? But we know just a few days later, these same people are going to turn their backs on him. They're going to spit on him. They're going to call him names, just like we heard in the Passion. This week, we're going to hear a beautiful intimacy that Jesus has with his Father and with his disciples on Holy Thursday. We're going to hear uh, of his sorrow and his struggle in the garden um, as he uh, awaits what's coming, his loneliness. We're going to see his great courage on Good Friday, his willingness to suffer, his great strength, um, his passion on Good Friday. On Easter Sunday, we're going to see his victory. His victory, his triumph. All these things, all these things in this week upcoming. And I think the Lord, he, he knows we're standing on those steps right now. And he knows that we're looking out at that horizon and it's black and it's scary. And the Lord says, I've got something for you this week. Look at me. Walk with me. Be with me each day this week. Because what each of those moments are that we celebrate in Holy Week, what each of those moments are, if we boil them down to the, to the ab- absolute essence of what they are, they are love. They are love. He is courageous out of love. He suffers out of love. He is passionate out of love. He's willing to go further than we could ever imagine out of love, out of love for God, the Father, out of love for you. He loves you. That's what this Holy Week coming up is all about. And so I think the Lord wants to challenge us this week because we have a great opportunity to be with him and to experience his love. Yeah, not exactly in ways that, 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 that we're used to. You know, we just bless these palms and you want to be making crosses. Well, we can't do that yet. We will someday, right? We won't be able to receive Jesus in the same way. But he's saying to us today, I'm here and I am love, and I am for you. That horizon, that blackness, you're going to see a lot of that on the news and on the internet. But the Lord wants to look at you today and say, hey, you don't have to look at that. Turn that off. Come be with me. Let me show you my love. Let me show you my passion. Let me show you Holy Week. So, brothers and sisters, I know it's dark out on that horizon, but it's Holy Week. This week, it's all about love, unstoppable love, and it's love for you. Let us profess together what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Well, let's turn to the Lord now with trust in his love for us and offer these prayers.
our response is, Lord, hear our prayer, that the church will remain faithful to God's will, especially when we are persecuted, rejected, betrayed, and denied. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our political leaders, health care workers, and first responders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer from illness or injury, from fear or from loneliness, may find peace by joining their suffering to Christ's cross. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will join poor people, homeless citizens, unborn children, and war refugees in, in a solidarity that leads to freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our friends preparing for the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist will be sustained by the victory of the cross. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the crucified Lord will raise up those who have died. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, the parishioners of St. Joseph, Mater del Rosa, and St. Wendelin, and for the intentions we hold in our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I want to pray in a special way, too, for Father Bill Ritzert, uh, who died last night, for the repose of his soul, and for all who've died. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear and answer the prayers that we make in Jesus' name, trusting in your love, and your mercy, your power, and that you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, who will become the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Mysterious water and wine, with the undershining divinity of Christ, all but himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask to receive us. We are pleased with the sacrifice we have to you. Humble and contrite hearts. Wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand so that though we do not merit it by our, de our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all of the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who've fallen asleep in hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Madre Dolorosa, with Saint Joseph, her husband, with all the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Wendelin, and with all the saints who please you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. One of the blessings of being able to do this is that I've gotten to talk to so many of my family and so many friends from all around the world and who have gotten to see it. So this is a great blessing of this hard time. I'm so happy that so many of us uh, could be together. To my parish family, uh, I love you so much and I miss you. And I just pray for you and with you each day and look forward to seeing you again and making crosses and doing all those things with the palms. It's going to be great. So keep your chin up and keep going. Give us a call if you need anything. And um, we'll be happy to do what we can to help you. The Lord be with you. Bow down your heads for a blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.